Here's some U.S. Navy-centric film that covers a few aviation activities undertaken by the service. While researching the Bell X-1 project, I came across some footage of the Douglas D-5582 that I wish I would have found years ago when I was working on the Mach 2 DVD project. The D-5582 Skyrocket was a high-speed research project that was essentially the Navy's counterpart to the Air Force's Bell X-1. Built by the Douglas Aircraft Company, it was the first aircraft to reach Mach 2, or two times the speed of sound. The early Skyrockets had a turbojet engine installed in the airframe, as the original intent was for the aircraft to use both jet and rocket power during various phases of flight. The jet capability was removed later in the program, after which the Skyrocket was air-launched from the belly of a converted B-50 bomber. Three D-5582s were built, all of which survived the program. They're displayed today at the National Air and Space Museum, the Plains of Fame Museum in Chino, California, and inexplicably on the campus of a community college in Lancaster, California, very near Edwards Air Force Base. Douglas Aircraft was also responsible for the design of the Navy's F-4D Skyray aircraft, which we can see testing here. This was a carrier-based fighter interceptor that had a relatively brief run in Navy service. It joined the fleet in 1956, and by 1964 it had been retired. Like so many aircraft of the post-war period, the design of the Skyray was greatly influenced by German aeronautical research. In this case, the tailless aircraft work done by Alexander Lippisch. Naturally, the designation F-4D was eventually slurred into the nickname Ford. The plane was equipped with a single J-57 turbojet motor and was just barely capable of reaching supersonic speeds. Douglas built a proposed follow-on to the Ford called the F-5D Skylancer, which sported a much thinner wing. The Skylancer never entered serial production, but it did gain some notoriety as a trainer for the X-20 Dinosaur, where it was flown by Neil Armstrong to develop abort procedures for that program. Finally, we have some footage of U.S. Navy airship operations. The Navy started using airships as early as World War I, but it was during the interwar years that the service's fascination with the craft really took hold. In the early 20s, the Navy contracted for the construction of massive rigid hydrogen airships, notably the USS Shenandoah, 
which was based on a German Zeppelin design, and the USS Los Angeles, which actually was a Zeppelin that was taken from the Germans as payment for war reparations. Sadly, both of these massive airships were lost in accidents, and the Navy soon realized that their investments in these monster dirigible aircraft were ill-advised. Instead, they chose to focus on smaller helium-lofted blimps. During World War II, the blimps really came into their own as platforms for anti-submarine warfare. They patrolled both the Atlantic and Pacific coasts of the U.S., as well as some other areas around the world. During the war, the Navy purchased over 140 blimps, all from the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. The blimp shown in this footage is a K-class model, 133 of which were built from 1938 until the war years. The footage shows a post-war training flight from NAS Lakehurst in New Jersey, which coincidentally was the location of the famous Hindenburg disaster. Note that the Navy seized on the opportunity to use the blimp as a billboard, just like modern airships are used. As anti-submarine aircraft became more effective in the 50s, the Navy slowly began to retire their blimp fleet with the use ending in 1962. 